Ele é o oficial reformado do Corpo de Bombeiros de Nova York e participou do resgate às vítimas do 11 de setembro. Dan Daly, venha pra cá! When I met, I'm going to say that in Portuguese. Quando eu conheci o Dan dele, que foi logo pouco depois daquele desastre horroroso que aconteceu, aquela tragédia, eu disse para ele que um dos meus sonhos, desde criança, era ter um, um capacete de bombeiro de Nova York. Aí ele disse assim, quando você for lá, me liga, que eu vou arranjar um para você. Eu pensei que fosse só uma gentileza. Mas quando eu estava para embarcar, minha amiga Ana Paula Ferreira, do consulado, me disse, ó, oh, o Dan disse para você não deixar de ligar para ele. Ele me convidou para ir almoçar lá no, no, numa das estações e me deu esse maravilhoso, so well, beautiful. You cut quite a stunning figure with that hat on, I must say. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> and what's the meaning of the number here? Well, 343 stands for the uh, amount of firefighters that lost their lives on 9-11. 343 firefighters. That's incredible. I was very moved by your kindness and special, especially by this symbol here, you know. And it's actually a news. It's not something new, just made for show. No, it's a real... It's it, it was the used in fires. It's the real deal, Joe. You know... Joe Suarez, you got to get the real deal. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on. Well, thank you very much. Guarda com carinho. You know that when I, uh, I said, what I'm going to do w with this helmet when I'll go through, uh, to get into the plane, through costumes and everything, especially because at that time, everything was even tighter than now, the, the security measures was, yeah. and all that. And I, I took it in my hand because I couldn't put it in my, in my luggage. It wouldn't go. So I just passed with, uh, with the, the helmet. When the guy saw the helmet, said, Ah, oh, you can go. You don't have to pass through the x-ray. Really? Yeah. Because it was very near the thing, right? There were probably some people that were very afraid on the plane when you got on with that <laughs> helmet. <laughs> well, maybe they felt yeah. secure. Yeah, well... The it man is be. here. It is. It's a New York City Fire Department helmet, so there you go. And you know I have a special gift for you today as well. Come on. I got a new, a new fire helmet for you. Yeah. And it's the foldable kind. It's our latest, uh, it's our latest model here. <laughs> FDNY Fire. There well, you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. And see if it... Ta -da. At some time, you, want, you might want to take that tag off, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. It, it's, it's a pleasure, and it's great to see you again after, it must have been seven or eight years now since, yes, uh, since yes. we talked, and you, you came up to our firehouse. And you, do you know, remember that chicken dinner that you had up there? Of course. I heard that you came back, and you, you enjoyed it so thoroughly that you, you had a monologue about how good that chicken dinner was. It was amazing. Well, you know, the firefighters, the firefighters gave me a leg of chicken to bring down here for you. But unfortunately, when I went through security at the airport, they took it away. They took it away, Joe. Otherwise, I'd have it here right oh, here today. Oh, <laughs> too bad, too bad. I don't know why I feel a little lucky about that. <laughs> yeah, they, you're right. There'd be a horde of flies right now with that yeah, piece of sure. chicken. I'm sure. It's yeah. funny because uh, I didn't know that you do your own cooking, yes. right, and on the on the on the station, we and uh, the the cooking the the cook varies when uh, the firefighter is a good cook or not so good cook, right? That's true. Uh, if he's not such a good cook, I wouldn't want him cooking for me. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the conditions of the... Um, I, I don't know if you're allowed to say that, but I mean, I know that the New Yorker firefighters had the worst pay in, in the whole United States. Is it still like that?
the state that pays the less? Well, I, I, I don't know if we're the lowest, but we're, we're pretty low. Mm -hmm. And it's very uh, fiscally constrained now up in, in the state. So all the salaries are being cut. Yeah. The value of the properties have gone down. So it's really, really a tough time, especially if you work for the government. Yeah, well, well, now I know that. But I mean, at that time, it was incredible because the argument was that it was such an honor to be part of the New York Fire Department that uh, they say, oh, okay, you don't, you don't get so much money, but... You are in the New York Fire Department, which has, it's a very, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing, it's a big honor to be in there. Yeah, well, it's the same thing if they were to say, uh, hey, Joe Suarez, you're on this great night TV show. We don't have to pay you. You get your name out there yeah. in front of the TV. <laughs> I mean, you know. Exactly the same thing. Yeah, so I think you know what we're talking about. But the point is that uh, firefighters really risk their lives, and all of them have to have an additional job just to pay the bills. Yeah. So no one wants to get rich on the fire department. We're not there to get rich. We're there to serve the people. But you have to have uh, another work on the side. Yes. Everybody has another job. Yeah, I know. But, well, we'll I talk yeah. about that. Yeah, there. my job is cooking chicken, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And you do it. And unbelievable, splendid. right? <laughs> now, Dan, why are you doing in Brazil this time? Well, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I had the opportunity to bring four wounded veterans down here who lost their legs, and they wanted to do a Rio marathon. And I oh, now yeah, the, yes, yeah sure. it was it was a great marathon. Four really brave uh, troops. I've been volunteering with them for the last eight years, and uh, I gave the consulate a call when I was coming down and said, I'm going to be down here. If you have any schools that uh, that I could speak at, so they did a fantastic program. We talked in the City of God as well as El Ali Aliman to the students. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers came in and they, they presented uh, speeches to the kids. And what a wonderful experience was. Even though the neighborhood is what it is, there's sparkle in the eyes of those children. And you can really see the hope for a better future. I, have, I think I have a photo. Let, let me take a look. There. Th this is some of our Achilles people. I believe this was in, in Poland. And uh -huh. as you can see, we have these special bicycles. Right. And that's a wounded veteran down there who's missing both legs. And it, it's great because when these guys come back, some of them are 19 and 20 years old, it, they feel like their whole life is shot, is gone. But they come out and they participate in these races and they feel a lot better about themselves and they start regaining some self-esteem that's really so important to them. Sure, they feel part of it. Yeah, like it's mainstream, yeah. yeah. And it was great to see him out there in Rio. Rio is such a great city, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, it has nothing to do with the bikinis. Nothing at all no, to do with those no, beautiful with little bikinis. No, no, no. We weren't interested at all in this No, stuff, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, uh, you were in place, you were at the local of the 9-11 the, the thing. Yes. I think you had a brother, too, that was there. Well, well I, had a I, I had a nephew that was nephew. Uh, up above the floor, and uh, he's one of the few people that made it out of the building. Mm -hmm. They told him to stay put, but he was above the floor where the planes hit, and he, he was a carpenter, and he was very uh, fastidious about some things, and he wanted to get out. So he searched, and he found an open staircase, and uh, he found himself out of the window and ran for miles and miles just with that fear in his heart. You told me a terrible story of some, uh, somebody, one of the firefighters that was going to help uh, a lady that was under a lot of stones, just her arm out, and when he pulled it, it was just the arm. Well, it, it was a lady's hand sticking yeah, out right. of the dirt, and she had a wedding ring on, and that made it very real to us, you know, that she had a, a husband, she had a, a matrimonial ceremony, okay. and... Uh, Myself and another individual had to chop that arm off from the rest of the body so it wouldn't be lost in the debris. And just doing that, just the act of doing that to a, a human part uh, with a shovel was something that forever is etched in my mind. You know, there's one thing when, uh, you can't believe it's a coincidence, but it's amazing that there was somebody, some French documentarist that was doing a documentary about a rookie. Uh, yes. And exactly. He filmed the first and the second he, at the place where he was. He managed to film the whole thing. So it, they it, have a register of that it, yeah. tragedy. Yeah, and he was actually in the 
in the bottom of the building, he went into the command post and he got pictures of Father Michael Judge and a lot of the other people that were still in there when the building collapsed and lost their lives. Yeah. So it, it really is a, an epitaph uh, of extraordinary proportion. And the uh, people coming out of an elevator that was went down, got to, to, to be at the, at, the, uh, at the first floor, and they, they looked like zombies because they were going out and they didn't know what the hell happened. And at the same time, people were jumping out of the windows yeah. and they were landing all around them. We lost several firefighters from people who jumped out and landed on them. Tell me, Dan, how many, what's the, the percentage of casualties for each big fire, not a catastrophe like the one... Uh, well, we, we don't lose anybody, mm. generally speaking, at a big fire. We lose about five or six people a year mm -hmm. in New York City. But big burns, usually. Well, it, it, it's not correlated to a big burn, because you could have many... No, I mean, but not, de not deaths, just uh, oh. being burned on... on oh. Yes, at every fire there's, there's four or five people because we believe in what's called aggressive interior attack. Some fire departments don't go in, they just hit it from the outside. But our, because, go in. because the buildings are so close together it, in New York City that we have to go in, otherwise it could be contagious. You know what amazes me is uh, exactly when everybody is trying to, to run out, I see the firefighters running in. It, it yeah. isn't, and especially in 9-11, I don't know, you probably saw that photo of everybody running out of the building and those firefighters just coming up. And what you see on their face, they knew they were going what to their death. Yeah. They knew. Yeah. And you were born in London. I was, of Irish parents. So, uh, and how did you go to America? And you have a name, the same name, yeah. well, more or less, the same yeah. name of a, uh, a great American actor. Yes, uh, Dan, musical act. Dan Daly, tap dancer, and I know you have a musical. Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, I was three years old when I came to this country, uh -huh. and uh, it was a very difficult time for me. I remember telling my mother, I don't want to go to America, and she said, uh, shut up and keep swimming. I'd <laughs> <laughs> uh, like to show the uh, three photos that I have eating your famous chicken. Oh, that's right, and uh, okay. again, my... Uh, My, look at oh, that. Look, there he is. Now, doesn't that look good, folks? Yeah. It does. It smells good from here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry they took that chicken away from me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I only the two photos here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, I, I ate Joe, a lot Joe, there. Do you remember that you ate three huge plates of no, chicken? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Make the two and yeah. we're yeah. done. And uh, I know you wanted your favorite coconut candies, too, but we didn't have them for you? No, no problem. No problem. Well, Dan, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to have you here. I hope you enjoy your, your trip this time. I thank you again for my hat. What is my hat? Don't steal, don't steal it. Here, get that here. man. <laughs> okay. It's in a very very special place in my studio, you know, and I think it was a very generous thing that you did for me. Well, Joe, I want to thank, thank you, you very for, much. for highlighting some of the needs that we have as human beings and, and focusing on things that we can work on and get better at as a society, because you are, have a very important voice. So thank you for oh, that, Joe. Thank you very much. Now, Nelly.